Hello, YouTube. My name is Dan NG, and today we have our model Ann Winston with us. And uh, we're going to experiment uh, with the Waylight today uh, versus two studio umbrellas. Um, our environment is a white ceiling, two white walls, and uh, behind you we have a glass door that has light coming in and a hallway on the other side. Now, the only light source that's coming in right now is from the window behind, uh, behind you. And now, to prove definitively that the wing light uh, is on par with studio umbrellas, we are going to make sure this video is uncut, unedited, um, and that there will be no external light sources to, to prove that the wing light can definitively um, be on par with uh, umbrellas uh, studio lighting. And so uh, I'm going to show you my settings in my camera right now. Uh, I have my shutter speed at 1 8th, 1 80th of a second. <clears throat> My aperture at 2.8, my ISO at 200. Uh, for the first shot, I won't be using my flash. I'm just going to take a picture of the model to show the lighting environment that we're in. Uh, it's generally a low light environment. And can you just, well, oh, thank you. And what you can tell in this photograph is that uh, it's pretty much complete darkness. Um, without flashes. Uh, the, the light that's coming in from outside is actually not making any significant difference where it would affect the outcome of the experiment or the validity of the results. Now I'm going to take a photograph with the same settings uh, with ETT download uh, with my flash. This is an EX430. And the wing light's going to be in the upright position so that lights will be bouncing from both walls, the ceiling, and these two wings onto the model. Okay. Perfect. And so these are our results. You can see that uh, in the light meter, the uh, light graph, you can see that most of the lighting is on one spectrum. And it's not split up. So there's very little or no uh, blown out uh, portion of the image. And there's very little darkness. That means that uh, aside from, you know, let's say the model or the hair or whatnot, uh, there's pretty much no shadows in this photograph. And let me zoom in on that photograph. Here. And you can see that around her, there's very little to no shadows on the model at all. It's very little lighting. Okay, now we're going to take a photograph with uh, the two studio umbrellas now. Uh, I'm going to turn off my flash, it's off, and I'm going to turn on these two umbrellas. Very deep. And it will be attached uh, to my trigger flash. Or right here. My second umbrella will be using Slave. And we're going to take another photograph with the exact same settings 180 of 2.8 and 200 ISO in the exact same position. That's perfect. Great. So, and these are the results. Um, you can see in this graph right here, you can see a small portion right there. There's a small spike on the very far right of the image. That indicates uh, blown out highlights uh, in the image. And when you zoom in on the image, you'll notice that there are two shadows on either sides of the model. And uh, when compared to the wind light, there are no shadows. Okay, 
Now, to uh, further demonstrate the ability of the moonlight, I'm going to put this, these images on my laptop right here uh, so they can put blown out a bigger screen and to be manipulated on uh, Photoshop to demonstrate the effectiveness of the moonlight. They are the last three photographs. I'm going to open up the first photograph, oh, the third photograph, which was taken with studio lights. Well, well this one turned out to be the one without lights. Uh, this is one taken with studio lights. Um, and you can see that when I manipulate this exposure, you can see the two shadows, or the shadows surrounding the model to be more apparent. But when I blow it out, and you don't see the shadows anymore, what you see is uh, highlights, hot spots on the uh, model, which is not desirable uh, when you're trying to blow out shadows. So that's a constant struggle with photographers. Now, with the light, when we go down the exposure, increase the exposure, we see that there are very little to no shadows, and there's almost no need to, uh, to increase or lower the exposure, to reduce shadows. And for further evidence that this picture, photograph is taken with just the winglet, we are going to zoom in, uh, several hundred percent into your eyes. Um, and you see that the wing light is at the center. The two lights on each side are the wall bounces. The very top light is coming from the ceiling bounce. So that's one, two, three, four different light sources that the wing light is emitting. As I'm decreasing the exposure, you'll notice that there's very little to no shadows behind the model. When I increase the exposure, you notice that the brightness of the photograph uniformly gets brighter. And when the photograph is in its original setting, you'll see that there's very little shadows at all. And in her eyes, you can see the light, the wing lights, uh, the wing in the center and the two light wall bounces on the sides. This is a photograph of the two studio umbrellas. And you can see clearly there's two shadows besides her. whether in low exposure or high exposure. They are still very noticeable. When overexposed to reduced shadows, you'll get highlight clippings.